let's go ahead and let's get into the news. So, all right, this is kind of a cool one here. And if you're not familiar yet, Storytel is an audiobook publishing platform. And I believe you can get distribution through Findaway Voices, who we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, it has distribution to Storytel. Now, Storytel is a subscription based service in that um, readers will go and they subscribe and they're able to check out audiobooks. So, this is kind of neat to see. Uh, Ally put a post out. The Storytel partners with Spotify. So some of you may or may not be aware, Spotify has been making big moves over the last year. They were acquiring people like Joe Rogan to bring his podcast over to their platform. There's tons of music musicians over there. Now audiobooks is what they're trying to break ground into. So now that we have Storytel working together with Spotify, what does this indicate for us? Does this mean that we're going to get more exposure? Are we going to lose any control? Is this going to be some type of competition that maybe ACX might respond to in kind? Because... Spotify starts going crazy on podcasts. You know what Amazon ends up doing? They also go crazy on podcasts. In fact, they acquired thousands upon thousands of them that they distribute through the Audible platform. Yeah, pretty crazy, which this podcast, believe it or not, is available through Audible. So you ever get the opportunity, it's 100% free. You can go over and subscribe over there. <clears throat> so, um... At any rate, uh, Storytel audiobooks via Spotify. This is one of those massive stories that's been inevitable for several years now. And while Mark Williams and I and others have been talking nonstop about the rise of sub subscription and the potential consequences of audiobooks following the music industry, doubtless it will still have have taken many by surprise. Spotify aims to be the singular platform for all audio. So I want to kind of weigh in on, on the pros on this one right here. The pro is the fact that we now have something that's going to be a viable competitor to the likes of Amazon and Audible. Uh, because without that competition, Amazon has no reason to um, get better, to improve, to feel like they've got some skin in the game. Because no competition means that no worries. So why fix it if it's not broken? You know, but on the cons end of things, though, we look at something like a subscription based model where you're selling your audiobooks and you're getting a certain royalty. We'll say if you're going exclusive with ACX, it's 40 percent. That's all well and good. But when you get into a subscription based model, you're looking at getting a fraction of the cost that you would get normally from a sale. So we're in a bit of a quandary. Now, I'm not against library-based systems or subscription-based systems. They're actually really great because then you're able to reach out to other authors, but it's probably not going to be for everyone. So if you look at your epic novel that you spent thousands of dollars to have it professionally narrated and you're going, I'm not going to subscription-based service, I totally get it. I understand. But know that little things like this that come out, bubble up to the surface, like Storytel, partnering with Spotify, you're going to see some changes in the industry that can really impact everything across the board. Because if this subscription-based model takes off, you know darn well Amazon and Audible is going to be on top of something like that, which oddly enough... They already have a subscription-based model that they're testing out overseas. Now, I can't remember. It was either India or Germany. There was some location. My apologies. I don't have that fact checked right now. But nonetheless, they are testing that subscription-based model for ACX out. There was one for romance reads, but unfortunately, it flopped. They got rid of it, and that was the end of that. So, all right. Next news item. Let's move forward. Ebook revenues were up 21% in March 2021. This is by the good reader here. Excellent piece, by the way. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to drop it into the chat. Again, if you're watching this on the replay, unfortunately, you probably won't see that link. So you can get all this information if you go to scribando.com. That's S-C-R-I-B. 
B-R-A-N-D-O.com. So Scribando.com. But uh, ebook revenues in the United States were up 21% in March and the format generated $88 million. Digital audiobooks was up 16.7% for March, coming in at $58.5 million in revenue. Okay, so before I kind of go in here, I'm gonna give you a little bit of my opinion. My opinion is this, and I've said this already for the past few years. The audiobook industry is not something you want to take lightly because right now it's the wild, wild west. It was like what Kindle Publishing was back in 2010 to 2015. It was crazy. Those people that really were early adopters got rewarded big time. So you don't want to rest on this. I truly believe, and this is my opinion, that audiobook sales, downloadable audiobook sales, is going to eclipse the sales of ebooks and print books eventually. Again, my opinion, what do you think? Let's go ahead and switch it back on over here, focusing on the fact that the revenue came up in the first three months of the year, digital book sales increased 20.7% as compared to the first three months of 2020 for a total revenue of $278.2 million. Meanwhile, digital audiobooks was up 21%, coming in at $189.4 million in revenue. In terms of physical paper format revenues during the month of March, in the trade consumer books category, hardback revenues were up 50.9%, coming in at two roughly 300 million and paperbacks were up 27.7. So I said this last week, like right now is an amazing time to be in the publishing industry. Sure. A lot of the data that we're probably going to be getting is going to get skewed by trad pub companies that are selling a lot, but that's not to say though that a lot of indie authors are not crushing it right now. So if you are not seeing the results that you're getting, if you're a newbie author, first of all, give yourself some breathing room. But if you've been in this industry for more than a year, you've got a, more than a half a dozen titles out, but you're still not making a living at this one, you need to probably take a step back, get with a couple of your peers, have them tell you honest feedback, like what needs to be improved? Why are you missing the mark? Because right now is a big time. People are reading books now more than ever. The facts tell it. So um, I could go back into some more of these things, but I want to move forward because we got two more pieces to cover in today's news. So this one right here comes from my boy, Nate Hoffelder. Uh, Nate is just the, the sweetest guy I know and just the funniest, wittiest dude. I'm telling you, he cracks me up on Twitter on the regular basis. Nate's rules of social media marketing. Uh, I know you're probably saying, what's, what's Nate got to do with anything? Well, he's going to talk about social media marketing, and I want to kind of just go over some of these things. You can find this information over at natehoffelder.com. Um, but let's go ahead and go through some of these things because I think there's a lot of authors out there that probably want to leverage social media, but aren't really sure how to do it. So here we're just going to kind of blaze through some of these, 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 uh, four, it looks like four rules, maybe. Okay. It's more than four rules. So, um, First rule, social media marketing. Number one, don't. Social media is for socializing, not marketing. The act of socializing is your marketing. This is, in fact, why I hate the term social media marketing. It gives the wrong impression that one should be marketing when you're supposed to be socializing. I can't agree more than this right here. Um, it's okay if for some reason you're really pumped about something, about your book or something like that, go ahead and share with people on there. But people grow tired if you continually keep badgering them to buy your book and not really try to engage and build some real long-lasting relationships. People see that from a mile away. I want you to think about a friend of yours, and maybe you don't have a friend like this. You might just know someone who's like this. It's part of like a multi-level marketing uh, pyramid scheme type deal. And uh, they just, they come on to you really strong. Like, hey, I've got a great in income opportunity. How would you like to make another $5,000 in the next month? Or you know, what What would be the money that would make a life? You, you just, you start getting weird, but like, no, dude, I don't want your energy drinks or your fart pills. Keep them to yourself. So that's the thing is you got to conduct yourself on social media like you're having real conversations and it will really start to pay off. So big kudos to you, Nate. Don't automate things like sharing links to your blog post. And you know, to be honest, I break this rule all the time. I do too, Nate. I do too. Um... Let's see what he says. Maybe it gives us more context. The point is to be yourself, not a bot, which is why I stopped using Buffer to share links from my link post. Instead, I now share the links by hand all on Sunday. Hmm, okay. 
you know, um, I think there's something to be said about doing automation. I believe that it should be there. There was one point I'm telling you that I loaded up my uh, social media feed, you know, about 12 or more posts per day, but it was just ridiculous. It was just too much. And eventually I just said to my assistant, let's go ahead, let's pump the brakes. Let's take it back a step because unless people are actually engaging in this post, it's of no use because all social media platforms function on some type of a search in or alg algorithmic relevance. So if you're posting something and you're getting no engagement, guess what's going to happen? The algorithm's not going to serve you more people. It's not going to put your stuff out there. It's pretty much just said, ah, nobody's interested. Move on. Peace out. That's it. So there is that. All right, let's go over here. Don't only share links to your book pages on Amazon or mention your services. I, I agree with that. Uh, it's it, And here's the thing is, if you, you do share your stuff, uh, always remember that you're dealing with a global audience. So you'll want to make sure that when you're sharing any links... And this is off of Nate's piece here, by the way. If you share any links, give universal book links of some sort. You can get them done for free over at books2read.com. 100% free to do that. And it gets it to where it aggregates out to wherever your ebook is going to be published to. So that way, when someone clicks that link, they can pick the region, or excuse me, pick the shop that it's in, and the region will go automatically to them. So when you share your amazon.com link, though, and someone's in the UK, they click on that. Most people are going to be lazy that they're not going to want to go and go, well, I need to change out the .com to .co.uk. Yeah, most of us would like to think that people would go through that measure, but sometimes the path of least resistance. All right, let's take a look here. And we'll, we're going to point out just a couple more pieces of what Nate said here. Be nice to everyone. I like that one. Politics are fine. Just avoid being rabid. Agreed. Agreed. You know, that's that's one thing I just I noticed sometimes that there's just this political divide, especially over on Twitter, in which, you know, if someone has a, a, a differing viewpoint than yours, politically speaking, it becomes an instant like attack like, oh, I hate you. I hate your face. It is very possible in this day and age, folks, by the way, to have opposing views. So some of you might watch some of my videos and give a thumbs down because you disagree with something that I said. And I'm OK with that. That's OK. Be OK with other people having different viewpoints than your own because you know we don't need to make social media a, a complete cesspool of nothing but negativity and toxicity so yeah politics fine just you know yeah don't beat people up and don't get all freaking rabid about it you know um this is also too a eh? your objective is to provide content valuable to other people on the social network Yes, yes, yes. So big shout out to my boy Nate Hoffelder. Thank you so much, Nate. Which by the way, Nate I, I never knew you started at NateHoffelder.com. So uh, hopefully you'll be watching this later on. I'm sure I'll probably be dropping you a link. All right, and let's wrap up today's news with the very big news and the one that I'm so excited about. I had reached out to Will Degas over at Findaway Voices this past week because they got shortlisted for the London Book Fair International Excellence Award. Well, as soon as I sent that out, he sent back an email and was just super giddy they won it. Yes, they won the prestigious London Book Fair International Award. They are now the audiobook publisher of the year. Yes, ACX, we're looking at you. Yeah, we're looking at you. And I know that Find Away Voices distributes to ACX, but this speaks volumes that they're able to claim a prestigious award. I don't think Audiobook Creations Exchange is going to get that award for a while until they kind of clean things up a little bit. Uh, and if you missed out on any of the previous podcasts. I talked a little bit about the whole Audible Gate scandal that started in October of 2020, and it was a scary situation. But I want to say a big uh, shout out and a very big, you know, congrats to the gang over Find Away Voices, the US based Find Away Voices wins Audiobook Publisher Award in the London Book Fair International Excellence Awards of 2021. So that is the news for today.